Hey there, Wired Up Retro is now into episode 20, and today we're going to be making a little mini adapter that will allow you to play on your Atari 5200 with Atari 2600 paddles. And it'll be done in a unique way. I will say in one of our previous episodes, we had this Master Play clone in action. This has a Atari 2600 port, which allows you to use the Atari 2600 joystick, but it also, if you switch this little switch over to the other side, you can actually plug in Atari 2600 paddles, and it gets one of the paddles working in an analog way, along with one of the button on the controller. The second paddle that's uh, connected will not be in action at all, but the one does work. So what we're going to do today is a little different. Uh, by the way, you can buy these maybe these days on eBay if you ask Atari Guy 1021 who's an Atari Age member to provide one for you. I don't know, I haven't seen him up on eBay for a couple of months now, so maybe he's still making them, maybe he's not. But uh, anyway, I have one. It's a wonderful adapter for Atari 2600 and Genesis controllers, including the 2600 paddles. But yeah, what we're doing today though will enable you to uh, use both paddles and there might be a reason to do that and I'll go into that a little later. All right, so what you're going to be using, you have to have purchased already a Wico splitter cable and this is the, uh, the Wico joystick for the Atari 5200 command control and um, the splitter cable that comes or came with it back in the 80s you connect the uh, nine pin connector to the splitter cable nine pin connection. By the way, this, there's many people who have been fooled when they bought this into thinking, oh, this is gonna work on my Atari 2600 or my Genesis, and it doesn't, okay? It's spe specifically a nine pin connector designed for this splitter cable that it came packaged with. All right, on the other end of the splitter cable is a port for your Atari 5200 controller. It's a 15 pin connector and it enables you to uh, utilize the uh, start and the pause and the reset buttons as well as the keypad. Okay, so that makes for uh, a lot of opportunities there. But you know, you, when you purchased the splitter cable with the joystick, you wanted to use this joystick instead of this one and these two buttons instead of those buttons. So anyway, there you go. That's what the splitter cable is all about. So if you already have one of these or if you went to eBay and bought one of these recently or in the past few years for anywhere from 20 to $40, uh, all you're going to need on this project is that splitter cable. Um, another option is to contact a guy at um, Atari Age whose name is Bohoki. And Bohoki, B-O-H-O-K-I, can make you one of these. This is also a Wico splitter cable. Um, it has dual function. You can watch one of my last two videos where I went into this uh, briefly. All right, so um, this would enable, you have to un unhook this. And then you've got, essentially, um, now, a, uh, the same exact thing as this, except you don't have to connect a 5200 controller. You've already got a, a gamepad, and you also have the uh, start and the reset and the pause buttons on there. So it's kind of nice to have this. Um, either way, you could use this or this for this project. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use solderless connectors. I've used these uh, before in one of my other videos. Uh, when I was making some uh, other unique adapters to allow joysticks to be uh, turned around so you could use the stick on the right instead of the stick on the left. Um, so these solderless connectors, I've got two brand new ones right here purchased through, I, th I believe I got these through eBay a while back. Uh, this one's a nine pin male and it's, uh, this one's a nine pin female. You're also going to need a wire uh, with, you know, basically a lot of wires inside. These are multicolored, and um, I've got uh, green, yellow, white, red, and black. Uh, you're going to need a wire with six of these at minimum, okay? I would prefer, you know, I would say probably shoot for seven or eight or nine wires um, in case you make a mistake clipping one of them too short or whatever. So you're going to need that. Um, you'll also obviously need Atari 2600 paddles. And I want to just do a brief synopsis on the little minor mod you've got to do to the paddle 
um, paddles uh, before you do this project uh, in order for them to work on the 5200. You'll also need scissors and that is mainly so that you can clip the, uh, the little plastic piece uh, at the ed tip or edge of each of these wires that you're going to use off to expose the wire underneath. So scissors will do that. You can also use, I don't know, wire clippers, uh, you know, or uh, strippers actually, wire strippers. Okay, so let me show you a little bit about the little minor mod you got to do to the paddles and then we'll do the project. Now the first step to modding the paddles is to select the player one paddle and remove the two screws so it can be opened up. To figure out which is the primary player one paddle, try playing a game beforehand. Once you've got the paddle you'll be modding, be sure to unplug it from the console. Now when you're inside, you'll see the potentiometer with two connected wires. You have to disconnect the wire on the far left post and move it over to the far right post to connect it there. Leave the wire in the middle where it is. Here I'm showing you the process, and it's a really simple mod. So this is your game plan. You're going to want to have the Wico 5200 splitter cable 9-pin connector connected to your adapter. And um, on this side of the adapter, which is a 9-pin, you're going to have um, the number 3 spot of the pins on your adapter or your um, solderless connector with a green wire coming in. And that's actually a green wire that's coming from your cable that you've got here. And white goes into four. And then yellow would go into number five of that solderless connector. And then on number six, you're going to have black. And that's red coming into seven. and then blue going into number eight. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. On the other side, by the way, that was a female end for the 910 adapter. On this side, this is actually a male end right here of your 910 adapter. Okay, so into number three, you have the yellow wire going in. And into number four, you've got the white wire going in. And into number five, you've got the black wire going in. Okay, number six, nothing there. Um, seven, you have the red wire going there. And number eight is the green wire going into there. And number nine is the blue wire that goes into there as well. Okay, and then you, that's where you plug your Atari 2600 panels 9-pin connector. Hopefully that makes sense. Back in Wired Up Retro 3, I went into some painstaking detail on solderless connectors and making adapters. So if I, you know, it seemed to be um, not going into enough detail to your satisfaction, by all means, on this video, if you're feeling like you got shortchanged, Go back to watch Wired Up Retro 3 and I will give you plenty of details on how to get these wires fed in to each of these um, little solderless connectors. All right. So anyway, what you want to do, I've already kind of gotten some of the uh, plastic off of this white um, wire. Let's go ahead and remove some plastic off the yellow wire so you can see how I do it with scissors. Yeah, just kind of pick at it a little bit. Or you can use a stripper tool of some type to do this. You do risk using scissors here, you know, accidentally snipping the wire too short. So just kind of go at it gently and hopefully it eventually gets stripped off. I'm almost there. Yeah. There we go. 
and you know you do have to have enough wire exposed i think this is probably it's pretty short um, this one is probably plenty of length right here so uh, yeah i'll um, i'll probably remove a little bit more wire than that or plastic from from this just a little bit more anyway you get the idea you're gonna have to work at it a little bit to be satisfactory on each of the wires, uh, the colored wires. All right. And another thing, when you get to the black wire that you've chosen, this one, I've got multiple black wires. So let's say we picked this black wire that's parked right next to this red one. Well, you've got so many black wires on this side, which one is it? Well, if you pull it a little bit, it'll be the short one. There it is. So now you know which black wire that you've selected. All the other black wires aren't going to be used. Just that one will be used. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start uh, removing material and we'll have these um, uh, ready to go to be fed into, into these. All right, according to our schematic. I'll be back. All right, so I got all the proper ends clipped. These are about two inches long and that might be a quarter I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch uh, of exposed wire, uh, give or take, you know, a little bit here and there. So I got both sides taken care of. And, you know, I had shown you this before. If you get these, um, they open up by unclipping the sides. And you'll see these are numbered just like this. And on that, that's the uh, female end. And this is the male end. Get it opened up. Okay, if I can get it done right. All right. And once again, the numbers all correspond nicely. So you're basically going to just take this end and connect it to that. And then this end will connect to this. Okay. All right. I'll feed them in. Um, it's actually, they're very simple to put in. Let's say we want to do the black wire that I exposed here which is right here, and that goes into number five. You're going to want to take a very small um, flathead screwdriver and unscrew that. And then once it's unscrewed and you can get this into that, then you screw it down. You screw number uh, five screw downwards until this is held in place. And you're going to do that with each of the wires according to the diagram. All right, so I'll show you what that comes out looking like. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all these wires connected. I did end up clipping these black wires off of each side, so I'd have more room to fit all this. And once you've got that up there, you're going to want a way to pin this down. It came packaged with uh, this little piece of plastic, which I'll be placing here to sort of pin it down. And these two screws, one will go on this side, and the other will go on the other side um, of this piece of plastic. And that will enable you, when you yank on this, to not be putting pressure on the uh, points where you fed those wires into the holes. All right, so you've got one for this side and also one for this side. I'll take care of that and uh, we'll be back. We're gonna end up closing this up and then um, we'll put it into use. Also, another thing, um, if you don't connect the white and the black wires on either side, let's say you left them out, it's still gonna work, okay? You'd end up with um, one paddle working with one button, okay? But if you do want to decide to uh, connect the black and white wires on each side, uh, black being going to six here and white going to four here and black going to five here and white going to four here, then you've got your second paddle in action. Um, which is a good thing for uh, a couple of reasons, which we'll go into a little bit later. But there might be a downside to doing it, and that is that you have to pay now attention to the second paddle and what position it's in. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a hassle. So uh, I know the Master Play clone kind of left out these black and white wires on its, uh, the way they did their adapter was just to have one paddle in action. Um, I'm doing this a little differently, but you have the choice, okay? All right, so let's get these uh, shored up a little bit. All right, so as you can see, I've got the screws in place. We're just going to clip them shut. 
and we've got ourselves nice fully and fully able to withstand some force adapter okay so we'll connect that up and we'll see what we can do with it all right, so we have one of our favorite games on here, Super Breakout. What you want to do with your splitter cable is you, on one end, you plug your Atari 5200 controller into this end, and then this is where you plug your special adapter. And into the adapter, I've got these a pair of paddles plugged in that modified uh, for the 5200 paddles. All right, so I'm just going to press the start button to get the game started. Make sure that is centered. And here we go. And you can see the paddles working just like it would for an Atari 2600 game. It's really, it's just perfect. Now this paddle has been maintained well. There are some tricks that you can implement to make sure if you have a jittery paddle that it won't jitter anymore. But yeah, for the one button games, this is uh, gonna work really well. Now for the two button games, uh, things get a little bit more complex, complex or complicated. And I'll show you those here in just a moment. All right, so now we got ourselves Tempest, which is a two button game. You got the main fire button, also a second button for the super zapper. So here we go. We're going to basically get it rolling here. Um, I do want to show you one thing. You, if you don't have a 5200 controller and instead of using that on either this game or Breakout, you want to use a Master Play interface clone or a Master Play clone, you can get that substituted in there for your 5200 controller. Just unplug the splitter here and yeah, the, the 5200 joysticks unplugged. Now we have the Master Play clone plugged in so you won't need this anymore you're just going to be using the a button to get it get the game rolling now if you're just using one paddle you're going to want to well, first pick the right paddle and you can see that i am controlling the game but i don't have super zapper so you can hold this second paddle in your other hand maybe right here up against your thumb and you could press the super zapper when you need to and see if we can get this rolling here okay super zap so i just kind of thumped it with my thumb another way to handle this is i put some velcro here here and here on this one and i put some velcro here here and here on the second so you can basically just um, connect them together with the velcro and you want to do it just like that so the, the controller that's going to be your primary one is right here. And let's get the game rolling with that. And then that's going to be your super zapper button. So you, your center point of the paddle is going to make you stable and not move. But when you're away from the center point, you're going to be really moving. Now I'm going to super zap there. It was readily available there. So this is probably a little better of a of a game plan than trying to hold two paddles and balance it all in your hands. This does take a little getting used to. It's not quite as easy as what I had shown in uh, Wired, Up Wired, Up, Wired Up Retro episode 18 when I used the Ultra Racer, which I actually have right here. So the Ultra Racer, when plugged into the adapter made by Atari Age member Bohokis, um PC, 15 pin to Atari 5200 15 pin adapter. This actually has recentering. These this won't have recentering. So this might be a little better for this game because if you want to know where center is, boom, you just let go of it. This one to get centered, you have to physically find the center point and and when you're there, leave it right there and try to keep going back to that same center point. So it does a little more of a learning curve with this. This is less. This also has the main fire and super zapper button. So when used with Bohokis adapter, I would say this may be a little better than this option. Okay. But if you don't have the Bohoki adapter and you do have a splitter cable, this is certainly a viable option. And it's similar to using the ultra racer on the Atari 5200. 
Now, there are some games that are one button fire button games that you still might want to use this for. So I'm going to show you that. Well, all right, we've got Activision um, River Raid up on the screen. We're going to play this. This is a one button game. You won't need the second button, just this one and the main paddle. This one, though, you can find the sweet spot in the game where the ship is going slow. And then if you dial it up just a little, the ship will speed up a little, or you can dial it up a little extra, and then the ship will go really fast. And then you can dial it back down if you don't want to go that fast. So this is uh, kind of being used just for the two paddles and one button. So we'll go ahead and get it started. All right, here we go. Now, as you notice, I'm going way too fast. So I'm going to now dial down the speed by moving this paddle. Maybe I'm going slower now. Yeah, thank goodness. All right. So, you know, it's kind of neat. I used to own this game when I was very young and I was on the Atari 2600. And of course that game was a joystick only game. And you know, these paddles could be used on a lot of different Atari 2600 games, but not River Raid. But now it's kind of neat to be able to use River Raid 5200 with Atari 2600 paddles. Oh, I'm running out of fuel. So I'm gonna start speeding up Okay, speeding up. Oh, I ran out of fuel. All right, you get the idea. So you can get this, it has to be at that one pivot point right before you start going fast. You wanna dial it in, and then if you need to go fast, you just gently move this forward uh, from that point. And so you have to kind of configure it before you start your official game. So anyway, there you go. All right, so we're on to another option, which is Dreadnought Factor. This is gonna be a game where you use not just one button, but both, and you're also gonna use this to speed up the ship and this one to go left and right, just like on River Raid. It's a little more complex though with the second button added in. So here we go. Okay, so a friend of mine from Level One Games, uh, my friend Muzz, who works there here in the uh, central Ohio area, um, he came up with an interesting idea during a conversation that we had about controlling 5200 games with paddles. And his idea was to maybe create a solid base um, that would go in on a table and then you uh, attach the paddles to the solid base and get them to swivel from a center point. Um, so for these two paddle games, this definitely is an idea that I decided that deserved a bit of merit to try to make something, okay? So, you know, I just walked into the thrift store. I bought a, a wall hanger, you know, basically a shelf. And, you know, on the back, you've got a place to hang it. It's, oh, $2.92 sets. So anyway, you notice I put some, some pieces of plastic on each side. Well, what these are... I, t I took these bottles of, uh, you know, in my uh, nutritional support cabinet, I had a bottle of vitamins and another bottle of, uh, I think it was Tylenol or Aleve or whatever. And I decided that I could relieve those bottles of their caps, okay? And you can actually um, remove the uh, part that's child, uh, the child safety part of the cap and still use that as a, the actual cap. Um, for the bottle. You're not really taking the whole cap away. You're only taking half the cap away. Um, the outer portion, okay? So when you take those caps, and uh, I just used fun tag. You could glue it, you know, use a super glue or whatever. But uh, you attach it to this, and just you have to make sure beforehand that your paddle, the handle of the paddle, is going to fit in that area. And initially this one had too much space. It was sort of loose in there. So I took some black electrical tape and lined it until it was a pretty good fit. Not too tight. You want it to be able to, uh, to easily pop out. Now I just popped out the <laughs> controller. Yeah, this happens. Um, but yeah, if you, if you wiggle it, you can pop it out like that. Okay. So once you've got that, then you take your other, um, paddle and stick that in there again I aligned it with electrical tape so if you have it set up just right and by the way these cords can be kind of a nuisance it would be nice if they were wireless paddles but they didn't make wireless paddles back in the day so you have to kind of have the uh, the wires in a way so that it won't yank against this and cause control problems 
So you've got your uh, primary dial, I think, here on the left, yeah. And then this is the one for bombs, and this is speed up and slow down. This is left and right, okay? Um, now, another thing, if this isn't set up initially into the exact right position, let's say you attached it like this, then it may not be right. So you have to make sure to get the thing started, you wanna turn the, this counterclockwise, no, clockwise, and attach it like that. And this one, oh, and by the way, I made small slits in the uh, sides of these caps because without the slits, these things were really hard to pull out of the caps. So you want the, you at least one, um, I put a slit on this, I put a slit on this side and a slit here, okay? All right, and then uh, counterclock, or clockwise should be good. Um, oh wait, no, I want, I want this one with the fully counterclockwise. I think that is how I had it set up initially. So now, yeah, and their stopping points right here. And I'm not sure that's perfect. If not, I'm gonna to have to swivel them some more. So we'll try it and get going here. Turn up the volume a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's, I have to have this one all the way down here to go left. And that, yeah, this is not set up quite right. So I'm gonna, Stop this, we'll come back when I have it perfectly set up and then you'll see it in action the right way. Okay, so now we got it, we got it. And I had to actually dial it back to this position and then bringing it forward to about here as our starting place for the gameplay. That's a good plan. All right, here we go. Left and right. And that's slow, and that's a little faster there. It's gonna take a little coordination, and you know, there's a learning curve with this, that's for sure. But once you've got it, you're gonna be able to, you know, tweak it so you can play the game very accurately. Now, you can also swap the right paddle for the left if you, you know, are not as good as, at handling things with your left hand as the primary. You can switch it over to play it as the right. Oh, man, missed, okay. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, who, who knows what you can find at the thrift store like this, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a wall shelf. It could actually be maybe a, a bookend, okay? A bookend that you can just sticky tack uh, these, these bottle caps to. All right, so, you know, and a neat idea. Thanks, Muzz, for the idea. We really appreciate it. As we finish out the episode, I do want to also mention, I, I tend to be mentioning this often, I'm part of the Atari 5200 podcast with my other four friends. So if you check out the link um, in the description, uh, you can check out uh, my contribution to the, uh, to the 5200 podcast. I really enjoy being with those guys. As I've told you before, it's well worth checking out if you are in any way related to Atari as a fan. So, all right. So uh, our next episode uh, should be coming up pretty soon here. I'm gonna be handling some, uh, another outer space game that has um, you know, to do with using a flight yoke, okay? And that game is Star Wars the Arcade Game, not just on the uh, humble Atari 5200, but also on the GameCube. They had made a GameCube um, basically an emulation of the actual Star Wars arcade game and there is a couple there are actually two really cool ways to get flight yoke action on your GameCube so I'm really looking forward to explaining that and showing you a little bit about how to do it uh, using some interesting adapters so all right look forward to seeing you on our next episode it shouldn't be coming up t uh, too long from now all right you guys have a great spring take care